here we go. We're in the mounds. What do you think is going to happen here? Low side, high side, off road. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh, ah, uh, almost. Almost. One, Fuck. one thousand, one thousand R. Left leg. What kind of mechanism do we think here, everybody? He's starting to talk. He's starting to like show his left leg a little bit, and he reached for it. Almost saved it. Imagine a knee. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Rescue yourself, buddy. Ooh. Was he wearing gloves beforehand? So we're gonna go pretty fast. We're gonna make this corner. Uh oh, panicked. He could have made that. So the bumpy to the bumpy to bumpy is is ABS kicking in. So if he didn't have that lean angle traction control or anything like that, it would have been a panic. He would have dumped the bike. So the, that kept him upright, but it can only do so much. It really can only do so much. You have to be able to slow down and not do that. Now, we're talking about slow look, press, and roll. We want to be slowing down before the turn, looking through the turn, keep going, pressing, rolling on throttle on the way out. He was wearing gloves. Okay. So even with gloves, you can have some injuries. So let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, he was wearing gloves. I wasn't. I was kind of blocking it. So he's keeping it up. He's doing fine. He did impact that guardrail. And if you guys know anything about how you sit on a motorcycle and you have your legs, you know, on the sides, well, you're hitting your knees. You're going to hit your knees on that guardrail or hit your shin. If you lift your leg up, maybe you won't. But who knows? You could easily hit something. Now we're going to come up to here. It's like our goal is not to hit the, the side of the mountain, but then we do right there. So we can crush our hand. And I think that's why his hand hurt a little bit. But we're also crushing other parts on that left side. So I'm thinking left side mechanisms and uh, injuries. Okay, it's usually going to be legs and arms for injuries on a motorcycle, especially if they hit something like this. An angular accident is mainly going to be just on that side, and it's typically, typically going to be the leg or the arm. Okay? There's the, or the shoulder. All right, two wheels and tattoos. Here we go. We got another two-wheel guy. All right, moving through here. Oh, okay, we got somebody coming up. Oh, brake, brake. Why is everyone braking? Why is everyone braking? Great job on the progressive brake pressure. Why were people braking? Because of that. Uh, let's figure it out. Let's figure out what happened here. So we're coming up to here. We're in uh, an intersection. It's a roundabout. So another Mustang causing trouble. Um... We want to be in orange stage. Let's go ahead and put that back on the board. Orange stage, prepped and ready, covering the brakes, looking for escape routes, keeping our space cushion, everything, everything, everything about plan right here, which we talk about in the basic training course, which is $4.99. Take the course. It's three plus hours. It's going to get you up to speed on what a smart rider is. So we're, oh, brakes, slamming the brakes. Now, why did we slam the brakes, Mr. Mustang? What is this guy doing? Is he crossing that line? Are we paying attention? Is this the first Mustang owner that is a smart driver? I don't know, maybe. So he's looking at him like, whoa, what are you doing, buddy? So we slam the brakes. Instead of accelerating or honking the horn or rev bombing this vehicle right here, which we typically see motorcyclists do, he decided to do some type of evasive maneuver, an escape path, and then applied some brake pressure to allow this dumb dumb to go. Okay, so that's something that we could do also. But the reason why all this happened is because the vehicle in front of us made the wrong choice. And we are behind these people and witnessing it. So this is why we don't get up to here and ride people's asses because we're not going to be able to stop in time. So this person's total stopping distance, we're talking about the motorcycle rider now. Total stopping distance is whatever you can do to stop. We have to perceive, react, and then break. Okay, so perception. Okay, you got to actually pay attention to this and see this. Reaction reaching for the front brake, reaching for the clutch, maybe reaching for your foot on that rear brake, looking for escape pass, and then you have to actually react, so you actually have to squeeze progressively, okay? So here though, decent space cushion, handled it well. Let's say he was like 10 feet closer. Let's see what happens if, if he was 10 feet closer. If he was 10 feet closer, where do you think this motorcyclist would end up? Where would they end up? In the back of this BMW, in the hospital, dead? I don't know, probably maybe not dead, but who knows? You could hit this person, not a big deal, slow speed, let's say 5, 10, 20 miles an hour even. Fell down to the ground. We're in the middle of an intersection. Somebody's not paying attention to you behind you, and it's a big old truck driver. You got full gear, helmet, and everything. One of those tires runs, o runs over your head. 
It's like a wild amelm. Wild amelm just getting smashed. Watch out. So handled it really well. The one thing that saved him was originally the space cushion. This space cushion right here. That's the only thing that saved him. Make sure you have a space cushion. Like I said, we talk about it in our course, $4.99. Take the course. Here we go, we're coming to an intersection. We got a dumb, dumb Volkswagen driver going head on to hack GPP. Let's watch that one more time. So once again, we're gonna be in orange stage. We're coming up to this intersection. Honking the horn can only do so much. We wanna get ourselves out of here, get ourselves out of here, okay? Got a lot of weirdos in this intersection. All right, Dr. Filippo, Filippo, going a little bit fast, higher than the flow of traffic, possibly trying to catch up to this driver right here. He made a mistake. Hey, he parked it in the parking space. We're in a parking space, right? No, that's the gore area. Do you mind kicking the kickstand down? Now, why? Thank you. Sorry about that. Now, why? Yeah, I'm good. Ooh, broken clavicle. It doesn't take a lot to break one. Fuck's sake. Um. Yeah. Full gear. But full gear. Look who's in front of us. I'm sorry, but I'm very judgmental and I'm very, you know, the Occam's razor basically says the simplest answer is basically the answer. When I see like a really cool looking vehicle in front of me, like a Corvette or Lamborghini, whatever it is, whatever you find cool. I like Tesla plaids, you know, they look really cool to me. I don't know. But either way, I when I see another motorcycle rider hauling ass, hauling ass, and there's like a race vehicle, a super sport type thing in front, I'm assuming they're trying to keep up. Okay, I'm assuming that's the case. So if we're not riding our own ride, we're riding that person up front's ride. So they get to make a split second decision. We have to make a decision off of their decision. So we're coming in and watching and paying attention to this driver up front. Now let's see what happens here. All and ass, all and ass, that person switches lanes. That person is gonna turn left. Now they knew that they were gonna turn left. They knew they needed to slow down. They know that they can't afford any good meals like uh, Chick-fil-A, so they have to go to McDonald's. So they knew already that they're gonna go into that left lane. We didn't know. We assumed that they're gonna haul ass. We're just trying to catch up. And now all of a sudden we're not prepped for a turn and we still wanna follow that person. We still wanna follow that person. Well, they slowed down before the turn, we're not. So what's gonna happen here? A little bit of ABS kicking in. A little bit of ABS kicking in. Okay. Uh, that's not good. Oh, we started to slide that rear tire. ABS kicked in, but then we reapplied and we locked up that rear tire. And now we're getting into what is called a low side. This is going to be a low side so far. So far. Rear tire starting to slide out. We're starting to fall down in. And if it just kept going, we'd land on our left side and just slide across the ground. You typically see that on corners where people go a little bit too far, dragging too much knee, decided to drag their face, and they just start sliding. But when we get up to this point, uh-oh, immediate, super quick, super quick. It's almost like a couple frames. So what happened here is that we're starting to get into a high side. So it starts to slide out from underneath us, but then once it's starting to slide out, it's going to grab traction and then flip. So we're riding like this. Look at me. So let's say this is the front tire, rear tire. So we're riding. Oh no, we're starting to slide. We're starting to slide. We're starting to slide. And then we flip. Then we flip over. And that's what's happening here because it grabbed traction. So it's sliding, sliding, sliding. Oh, let's grab traction. Boom, grab traction and flipped over. Instant, 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 instant. So let's watch the actual high side happen. Boom. So the high side is a very, 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 very bad accident. 